Hi guys, so it's me, Ethnic Green Living here, and I know that it's really, really late, so I'm pretty sure that no one is gonna catch this live, but as I share with you guys in my last video, I need to go ahead and um, transfer a lot, I was gonna say some, um, about a lot of my data from my cell phone over to my computer, and then I can free up um, some of my cell phone, because as of right now, I can't make um, videos on here anymore because I just don't have enough space. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Christy, um, aka Ethnic Green Living, and I am a working mommy of five and I'm all about doing a lot with a little. So that's the first part of it. And um, next up is I saw these really cute stickers at the Dollar Tree and um, I thought, you know what, this would be so fun for my little kitties that I am gonna make a whole unit of it. I was already thinking about going that direction only because um, we went to the Maryland Science Center um, last weekend and while we were there, um, they, you know, they already had this dinosaur exhibit in this exhibit, but they have just added a humongous extension to it and it was full of dinosaurs and stuff. And so um, one of my kids <laughs> really, really really wants to go into the um gift shop and buy something and so he bought the little astronaut figures that you guys probably saw over um on instagram in my insta stories when i was doing peek into the day of life so the astronauts that came from the maryland sign are maryland science center <laughs> so think about these lives i can't like do 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 edit any bloopers you get the raw real cut thing so anyway this was another um, item that I picked up there and I picked up two of these. So I was already thinking about, hmm, let's do a dinosaur unit. And then when I saw these at the Dollar Tree, I'm like, yes, let's do it. So I figured why not bring you along with me for the process. It's gonna be a little tricky just because of the type of tripod that I have, but I think we can do this. So I am gonna pick you up and take you to my shelf and we're gonna see what books we have. And then I am going to um, take you to my D bin. So if you've been following me um, or attending my lives, you know that these bins are alphabetically um, labeled. And so whatever is corresponding to that letter is in this bin. So for example, this is my letter D bin right here. So if I had anything that would be um, dinosaur or be pertaining to dinosaur oh this is cool you can like see me <laughs> so if I had anything pertaining to the dinosaur it would be right here in this bin oh this is perfect okay so um, I did not plan this out this is just real raw again <laughs> So those of you who show up for me, thank you for showing up, your girl. You make me smile. So I do have three dinosaur puzzles. This is Melissa and Doug. Um, it says dinosaurs, and this is what it looks like. So we'll start with this puzzle. It's a 48 piece. And so what I'm gonna do is just grab all the things that I have that are related to dinosaur, and then we can um, figure out how we want to um, plan it out by the day, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that type of thing. So these three puzzles were, um, these three puzzles were right here just because they do not fit in this D. See, it says letter D and E. Can you see that? Yeah, letter D and E. It doesn't fit there just because they were too wide. So I literally stuck them in the corner. So it, it works out fine. So, okay. So we have our three dinosaur floor puzzles. One is T-Rex, I showed them all to you, and then two or other just pictures. Next up we have this little guy that I got from the Science Center, and this guy, I got two of them from the Diant, Diant, two of those from the Maryland Science Center, and then we've already talked about, we have the stickers, and this is just a really cool way just to shop what you already have. It's like we're not buying any new. We're just going to use what we have. I'll show you this and then I'll take it out for you. So this is um, from Scholastic. And look, guys. 
So we can do colors, blue, yellow, red, green, blue. What color would come next or what, you know. So how you do it is just, you know, however you wanna do it or, you know, what's the next pattern? If it's one blue, two red, another blue, right? So anyway, this is an activity. And then with it come all of these little um, dinosaurs. So the way that I would work it then is I would, so here they are. And the way, oops, drop one. And the way that it's intended to be, right, like this. But then another way while you have it out is like, okay, um, say you have, <clears throat> this says a four. Okay, can you show me four blue dinosaurs? And they show the four blue dinosaurs. Hey, can you show me one yellow dinosaur? And there we go. So now we've created a whole nother activity from something that we already had. And then lastly, I have a sensory bin made, um, but it's not in, in this room right here. And so the way that one works is um, it's like a shoe box and it has rice and um, scoopers and um, all that type of things. And then you just literally stick the dinosaurs in there and let the kids like play with the dinosaurs and you know, do all that. Or you could do water beans or beans. Um, any of those would make good alternatives. So I'm just gonna stick this back in here because I don't like messy things and I don't want the area to be messy. But sometimes that's what happens when you're planning. It does get messy. And then like I have this guy, this guy. I don't know if he's really a dinosaur. <laughs> this guy right here. We got him. We got him. Because sometimes I post pictures of different things and people want to know how I came up with this or how I put it all together. Um, you know, or just sometimes you get ideas or you're inspired um, by, you know, watching other people's videos. And this one's a a totally different one it has like a little movable part um, but nonetheless it's still dinosaur so it flows into that into that vein um, so this bin was D and E so it also has dolphins and elephants in there none of that's really applicable to me but I do have this um, dinosaur book so that's gonna go in there um, and so that'll be a read and in this way, I know, like, hey, I need to go to the library for this unit. Or, like, you know what? I don't even have to go to the library. Like, I am good with what I have. So I don't even have to do that. So, like, here's another dinosaur. Oh, here's another dinosaur book. So already, without even going to any other shelves or any projects or hands-on, I have three puzzles, two books, a whole like set of dinosaurs I have stickers and then I have little tiny ones that would either make a sensory bin that would make um you know one-to-one -one correspondences and counting that would make really good pattern um sequences and all that um and so that is it for this bin um I do have wait hold on so hopefully this video doesn't get too long and hopefully you're up for these kind of videos but I feel like if I just put it all out there and you just take whatever you know you like kind of like a buffet so I have from the um, peaceful preschool because we do use some of them as well as um, nature with kids from the peaceful preschool we have this letter D and so I think that I would then um, use the, the D unit along with that and so with this one the way this is work is I would laminate this and I would let the kids use play-doh to make like a play-doh mat with this and they can just do the D and then also um, we have she has on there read aloud phonics counting fine motor large motor art 
um, and just all things that deal with with a D. And so that's that. And so that, that that's that. So I won't go in further into that. Um, but I do have a dinosaur cookie cutter. And so when we do the letter D, something that we may be able to do is to cut out um, dinosaur like sandwiches or maybe make um, cookies and cut them out dinosaur shape. So that is that. Now I'm just gonna grab you and take you over to the shelf. So this is this book you just saw, which was the, sorry, can't necessarily see what you're seeing. There we go. So this is the space book that you have um, been seeing all week on Instagram, if you've been following me there. Sorry, I'm trying to get a, a good look here. But so anyway, the point of me coming over here is that I have a book called The Dinosaur Wrap. And it has a CD inside of it. So we are definitely going to use this. Oh, you know what? I have a button that I can actually turn you around. Okay, awesome. I thought that I didn't have this before and now I see that I do. And so um, I think that we have a few more dinosaur books down here. And so that's what I'm just doing. I am just looking at my books and just seeing what I have. And then sometimes I come here and pull here, reading art, etc. And where I really want to be, uh oh, I'm sorry, got the desk behind me, is right down here. Because down here we have reptile, dinosaur, crime and detective, dinosaurs, desert, dinosaur. So here are most of my dinosaur books. And then we have Triceratops, Tyrannosaurus, Bart. So we just have pretty much all the dinosaur um, books that I have right here. And so I'll go through later and um, pull them and see if there's any picture that I want us to maybe... Um, trace or draw or read. Um, this one is Dinosaurs of the World. And some of this is going to be a lot for, you know, for a preschooler. Um, but maybe just looking at the pictures would be nice. And then sometimes I just like to have one that may even be out of their reach um, just to see what piques their, you know, interest and just so they can come and you know, look at the pictures and stuff and, and see if there's anything they have. And sometimes they come and they have questions from it. And it's so beautiful when they do that. So um, I will actually go ahead and leave this one out. And then I will take out one more, a soft bag. And then outside of that, we'll just come as needed. And this one is feathered dinosaurs. And um, just another book that had that's rich in that. I am just um, getting up from the floor and sticking these books right here. And then we're back over here because I really felt like I had a drawing book that had some dinosaurs or maybe a craft book that had some dinosaurs. So this one is Things That Go, um, Funny People. And here we go. One, two, three, draw dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. So now we're adding a drawing component. I am gonna just hold you for a second to take you over to my, um, my last shelf. And then over here, you see we have one that says dinosaur fossil that's on my science um, shelf. And if you missed it, I did a video that talked about all of my math living books and talked about all of my um, math living games. And so later I'm gonna come back and do my science books and my science games. So I'm gonna just grab this dinosaur fossil and take you back over to um, my table because I don't have any more things that are dealing specifically with dinosaur as I evaluate this shelf while I'm over here. And I'm just turning it back around to me. And voila, 
so that didn't take too long and again I shopped my shot you know my stash what I had here I didn't go out and buy any extra do any extra anything like that um, this kit says dinosaur fossils um, it says experiment kit it says learn how to form fossils and how experts um, excavate them so it's fossilized dig and construct and it's ages eight and up and it's three different um, kits and so this is what it looks like and then here's the back of it and you guys know that I direct um, a classical conversations community and um, last week or the week before that one of our, our project was making fossils and so I'm gonna just share it with you because it's really quick and easy um, just in case it helps you so you take play-doh or you take clay and you um, just have a, a workable piece however big or small depending on the objects that, that you're using to depend on the size right so you take your clay and then you take your object which in this case I'm gonna use this and you slather it with Vaseline <laughs> and then you place it on the clay or the play-doh and that'll form an indention and once you remove the item which in this case is a dinosaur it should be an imprint of the dinosaur or whatever it is that you're making and once you have that indention what you would do is simply pour your plaster it's a plaster of Paris yes plaster of Paris onto um, your play-doh and what you'll have left is a fossil so let me show you what we did in class so I'm just walking over to the um, to where I store our items and here is what the finished product looks like so we did this with seashells we took seashells and um, put it into clay and these are the fossils this is the result from using the pastor plaster of Paris and so we're gonna get something similar but it'll be instead of a seashell it'll be the dinosaur so I'm gonna just stick this back because I don't I don't want to be done with this video and just have a million things out the whole idea of me doing this is kind of just to talk with you um, while I walk but at the same like while I'm doing it but I don't want to create more work for myself or just be stressed at the end of it <laughs> just being honest and real so that is the end of that so the big kids um my third grader and my sixth grader are gonna definitely do this and then with the little kids um, my first grader is gonna be a helper for the pre-k and they are going to do probably something like this um, and we might even do something as simple as like the footprints of the dinosaurs, right? Like how cute would that be? Like could you imagine like if we did like a, a Play-Doh piece that's about this big and then we um, took the different paw prints or not paw prints but like the different dinosaur prints and stuck them into that like rawr, rawr, rawr. and so at the end instead of having the um, dinosaur skeleton like this, we'd actually have you know just a replica of the little feet prints of multiple dinosaurs so that would be such a cute project and parents would love to receive that that would make a really cool gift to even give or have and it'll just be cool for future dinosaur units so shall i stop here i know there's a few people watching me shall i stop here for those of you who've been following the whole time or should i now talk about like maybe like breaking up the days so if you haven't been here all along just a quick recap right so far just from going to the different shelves we have the how to draw dinosaurs where do you get all your books from so honestly i love the goodwill so i get a lot of my books from the goodwill because they are three four dollar and i honestly think you can't beat that price now some of them um you know i did buy the majority of them I bought them like used on homeschool swaps um, you know just at homeschool events that they were selling used curricula and at the Goodwill and um, then when I'm out at different places I pick up like so this all came again if you're new this all came from my D and E bin which 
was inside of this right here and I just pulled everything out of it. And so this whole wall that's behind me is specifically for um, keeping things organized alphabetically. So for example, when I wanna do a iguana unit, or no, it's not a, if I wanna do a bee unit, then I would just go and grab this whole thing with a bee, this bee basket um, or tote, whatever. And everything that begins with bee is inside of there. So um, back to what we have. So, so far we have the Draw With Me book, and then just off my shelves, you guys were there when I did it. We have the feather dinosaur. And then we have um, this dinosaur, Dinosaurs of the World, just as another visual for them and just so they can look at them and just, just enjoy. And then, I mean, I'll give them, I'll feed them as much as they want to eat. So if they want to go further, ask me to read it or ask me questions, we'll definitely dig into it. If not, this is geared more for like a preschool type thing anyway. Um, the dinosaur wrap, we're gonna do this every single day. And I have the CD inside of that. Um, like I said, we have the fossil experiment, the expensive one, like the actual kit. And then we're gonna do our own using this and footprints and plaster of Paris. We have the um, sorting, counting, manipulative sequence, pattern, I'm gonna make a sensory bin with these. We're gonna do our colors with these. Um, we may even let the dinosaur like show me, you know, place the yellow dinosaur on the letter A. They'll love it, They're like, I know, I know. And they'll put it there. And then I got these stickers from the Dollar Tree so that we can like do some type of craft with them. Um, they're just so cute, oh my goodness. We can talk about the letter D. Um, and actually this, this one right here is going to be to make the Play-Doh mat. So Play-Doh was in there. So that's, you know, the motor. And then we have again, this book, this book, all of my little dinosaurs. I won't pick them all up, but I know just, I saw a few people just join me. So I just wanted to kind of catch you up quickly on what's happening. <clears throat> A few more dinosaurs and then the last thing that I have these three dinosaur puzzles and so the question was um, before somebody asked me about my books was do you guys uh, want me to stop here now that you've seen all that I'm I'm gonna be using for this dinosaur unit and now that you've kind of watched me gather everything from all places are you like all right we're done with you or would you like to see like how I break it up further like into the Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday um because this is like my first time kind of doing a plan with me so I was just kind of sharing with you what I was getting, my method, like how I get it, where everything is. People want to know how do I keep everything, how do I store it, and I showed you that, even my storage. Um, nobody's common. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> Let me get my paper here. <clears throat> So the way it works is um, I have just just shelves that just display things and they're like themed. So right now I have blocks, um, you know, things just they rotate periodically. Um, some things stay there like permanent, like my wooden kitchen that stays there and everything else kind of rotates according to like what the theme is. So in there on my shelf. For this week, all of these dinosaurs will be on my shelves, on the wooden shelves. So at any point, the kids can go and grab these dinosaurs and they can um, play with them. So the dinosaurs will be on the shelf and they'll be like a permanent thing that they can play with. Also, what I will be doing is I will be having um, the play silks available as well as um, rocks and wooden cakes, I don't know what they call them, but the wooden circles so that the dinosaurs can rest on those. Um, the dinosaurs can rest on those. They can have mountains and different things like that with the silks. If you give me just one second, I wanna make sure my foam does not die 
on you. Um, but just, just really thinking about all the things. And I guess that kind of plays into like loose parts and um, all of that here with, you know, with the silks and all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of, again, just my, that's a more permanent situation that stays there. Give me a second to charge it and then I'll, I'll rotate it back. I think it's charging. I hope it's charging. I want to make sure. I just don't want it to, to die while I'm talking to you guys. Because <clears throat> it did that for another life. <clears throat> So while I am just adjusting you here, I think that that, can you see me good? I don't want to be too blurry there. Okay. So, so those dinosaurs stay um, just on the shelves, period. They just stay on the shelves and the kids can just kind of play with them as they um, choose and as they see fit and that really works well and so um, this excavation kit again it'll be for my big boys so I like to do any kits that we're gonna do on Thursdays so that'll be their Thursday activity um, like I said we I will just have these displayed on the shelves with the actual dinosaurs and they can just pick these at their disposal. So I am just writing along with the dinosaurs, the two books that are just going to get, you know, that are going to be on my wooden shelf right there. And then this is a book that I'm probably going to read every day and I'm going to read these probably books every day. Little kids do really well with repetition and reading the same thing over and over. And I know for adults, a lot of times it's like that's overkill, but for little kids, they do really well with that. It helps them um, just know what's coming. It It's exciting to them when they know the next part, you know, they're like, I know it and they, they feel good. And so actually we're helping with memorization. Um, we're just helping with a lot of um, wonderful skills that are needed to help our children um, in life. So I just think that it's a really good idea to read things multiple times. Repetition is key and it's good. Um, so these bat, these books that are that are right here, I'm just writing them down to just be a daily read and just a daily review. And even the big kid can just grab one of these and read to the little kid and and be good. And so that's a beautiful um, thing about it as well. One, two, three, draw dinosaurs. I'll just flip through here and find some dinosaurs that look simple um, for, you know, the bigger or for the littler kids to do on their own. Um, I think my first grader, my third grader, my sixth grader, they can do these on their own, but like the preschoolers, they can't. So I can do a couple things. I can go ahead and trace and cut this out for them and let them color it, or I can just do the whole, uh, a print out of the whole thing. I can let them go ahead and shade it in and color it or paint it their own self. So, I mean, there's lots of things. Or sometimes it's even kind of fun too to just let them trace it sometimes they they like even tracing it so i mean there's lots of ideas and just depending on the age group that you have will be like this but if you think like something like this is too advanced for your age group then of course you go online and just get rid of a free printable that you're looking for and that you want to do so these uh will definitely just get into what skeletons are uh what they look like that whole ordeal um for the dinosaurs and then again I plan on using these with a plaster of Paris to make my um you know to make my my models is that what you call them my models yeah <laughs> it's late um and then I can just kind of have those just the skeleton uh, models for later but also I think the kids would probably like to just play with these and just race them around and go like rawr, rawr, 
it's actually done. <laughs> um, and so these we already talked about. Like I said, I'm going to do my sensory bin. And I normally do sensory bin twice a week. I normally do sensory bins on Tuesday, and I normally do sensory bins on Thursday. And so again, I'm putting these in the basket with beans or rice or water beads or um, rocks, pebbles, anything like that. It'll be really cool, really fun. Um, if your kids are into water, you can just stick these into a bucket of water. And so there's a book. Oh my goodness, my favorite book. I have another book. It's from Usborne. It's called I'm a Dirty Dinosaur with the Dirty Snout. And then um, he's like, I never take a bath. I just, I don't know, splish all about. He goes, splish, splash, splish, splash, splish all. Anyway, <laughs> I love that little guy, the little dirty dinosaur, and he doesn't want to take a bath. And so anyway, he's like, I never take a bath. I'm just like, mm -mm -mm. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get that book, and they love that book. I love that book. That book is hot, all right? So anyway, um, and then like I said, there is some sequence in, in here, and then this is what we'll do for colors. So when we talk about um, colors and numbers, I think all of our colors and numbers from the week will come from this little pack right here and then anybody have any ideas of how we can use these stickers go ahead and put them in a comment if you have an idea um i was thinking that we could make a card to send um to a friend or to just have for the parents um they're so cool outside of the cards the only thing i can think of is just um putting them on their you know, for the bigger kids that they have work, they get to get a discounted dinosaur. The problem with it, though, is it's kind of it has some dimension to it. So if your child, you know, did really well with their work, you know, it would make their book kind of bumpy. It wouldn't make it as clear. Um, but I think something that you could do is, okay, you know, I spy with my little eyes a red dinosaur, right? Do you spy a red dinosaur? And if you get, you know, so they say, I do. And you say, well, if you show them to me, you can have them. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. I'm, I'm pointing up here. Four. <laughs> and then you'd be like, yeah, so you can have them. And then they could have the four dinosaurs. And so even we talked about that correspondence. Um, maybe you could have like, um, you know, numbers one through ten on a white sheet of paper. Um, I don't have one right here, but just thinking about this let paper, um, you know, think about the back of here, and then you tell them, okay, you know, put all the red dinosaurs on the back of this paper, or put all the red dinosaurs onto this D. And so then at this point, they take all the red Ds, okay, I can do that, and they take the red D and stick it on here, or stick any of the dinosaurs on here um, if we didn't use it as a Play-Doh mat. Um, so that's another option. Photocopy this. One gets laminated for a Play-Doh mat. Play with your Play-Doh. You got a letter D. Um, the other one gets dinosaur stickers. And so that's, a, that's another way to, to do that. And so I'm just writing this all this down so that I can have it for, for my kids because that's the reason I'm doing it. And then I do have three, four floor puzzle and I think for that the best thing um, and this one has a CD too so this one has a floor puzzle a music CD and an activity book so that that's another cool thing that like it, it has a whole um, thing with it so that there's some connected dots and just a couple other um, really cool things so what this is like whole <laughs> little uh, morning warmer strewing morning basket opening morning cake whatever you call it in your home all in one and so the way that I would do this is um, I have three puzzles I would go ahead and do it Monday we do this so this is a good opener we've got a couple activities in one so when they come in go right ahead and take out um, the puzzle and just put the puzzle together and so that's day one and then if they want they can try to color it um, or try to trace it on paper right so that's day one on day two we have another puzzle so then they try to put this one together 
Um, this one doesn't have all the extras that the other one had, and that's okay. Um, but they put this together on day two. Um, and then on day three, they um, put this one together. And so now, when you think about what they have, you know, you can see they have a puzzle each day. They have their colors, their numbers each day. They have a sensory bin two days. They have books daily. They are going to all do um, a kit on Thursday. And if they weren't doing a kit, they'd be doing an experiment. And then you have a couple of resource books, again, that, that are just there to spark curiosity and for um, ideas and just um, information. And so... Um, that's it like that's that's my whole unit and so what this looks like in your house I, I don't know because I'm not there maybe you don't have what I have um, but I will encourage you my model is always you can do a lot with a little um, the, the library may have some lending um, some dinosaurs they lend out I know that some libraries do have different things like that um, I probably should do another video on it but I have a, a wind alternative energy kit over there right now that we actually checked out from the library for our home school um but yeah so this is my unit for the dinosaurs that i'm going to be doing and this is for my preschoolers so my daughter is two my son is four so i have five kids so my littlest is kalani she's two and then i have aaron he's four and then my eli is my first grader and he's six so all three of them will work on this in some capacity and the things that Eli knows he can kind of be the teacher with the colors and the shapes and he would love being able to be helpful um, oh let me tell you one more thing too um, I'm not that parent that's so like oh don't touch anything like like I said I'm gonna do plaster Paris on my dinosaurs because I really want these footprints but let me show you something else um, let me give you another tip just because, you know, maybe daycare providers or just you're thinking about something for your own kids. Um, you know, you see these feet and, um, you know, something that you can do is you can like, okay, like you can write the number three, like the number three on your back and you can like put paint on the feet and then just like, or just put paint on just one and just have them just dip it in the paint and put it, dip it in the paint. And so all around the back of the paper, you'll just see three. You know, you'll see the three little toes. And so that's a really fun way to do it too. Um, but I just think that it's really cool to do like, just like dinosaur footprints. Um, and even once you talk about dinosaurs, another fun way to incorporate their own body, because we want to teach children at an early age to love. Um, hope you guys can see me and hear me okay. No one's commenting that they can't. Um, you know, we want to teach children to love and appreciate their body. And I think one way um, that we can do that is by letting them use their body. <laughs> let me, let me explain. So what I'm saying is like, um, when you're talking about feet, you're talking about the dinosaur's feet, take off their shoes and let them put their feet into the paint and let them put their foot print on here and so then we can do okay so this is what your footprint looks like and guess what this is what the dinosaur is wait does yours look like the dinosaur no your foot doesn't look like the dinosaur's foot why you know and then they'll be like hmm well I'm not a dinosaur I'm a human or I'm a boy or I'm a girl you know they'll, they'll say whatever they want to say um because you're so cute like that but that's another way like, well, wait, why does this dinosaur's foot like look like this? And, you know, why does this one look like this? And so depending on the age of the kids, you know, then it just depends on how, how, you know, far you can go. But let me just say this. You should not err on the side of caution when it comes to teaching children. What I mean by that is give it to them. Like, they can learn as much as you can give them. Sometimes we feel like, oh, they can't get that. It's too advanced. It's better to give them more than they can, than they know and they comprehend and, and stretch their brain, you know, so to speak, because they're sponges and they absorb it and you're just putting pegs in there. You're going to revisit this. How many more times do they hear about dinosaurs? Oh, many times, but you're just setting that foundation for learning and you're setting it in a fun way with painting and colors and shapes and puzzles and, and modeling um, and, and Play-Doh and, oh, can we design our own dinosaur with the Play-Doh? 
you know, can we can we replicate this? Um, you know, even if you took cotton balls into the letter D, can we take these cotton balls and can we make a letter D with it? You know, um, even just with the, remember the, the drawing, the artwork that I told you about, you know, even, even stuff like that. It's just the, it, it all comes back to just learning to love learning and learning to teach a love for learning. And I think that the children have to see you enjoying what you're actually talking about. Because when we're doing it, I'm a dirty dinosaur with the dirty snout. <laughs> like I really do it with them. And they think it's just so funny. And like I, I like wiggle my little tail. <laughs> and anyway, oh my gosh. So anyway, I think I'm done here. I think it is way past my bedtime, so like I'm just too excited about this dinosaur unit. Um, let me know if you guys thought like, yay, we want more planning, things like this. Or you were like, look, lady, this was not her cup of tea. Because normally like all my friends comment in the night, like I can see that people are there, but no one's commenting to me. And and so that's okay too. But um, I haven't exactly figured out what my next unit is going to be yet. And um, if you were following me on Instagram, I share with you that my friend um printable educating is printable education i share with you that she had a free dinosaur principle until thursday so if you were over on instagram i know you've already got that snatched that up oh and that's another point um they're called what are those things called they're in my wood bin they are like um they're not tangerium oh and i think i even have some dinosaur lacing um some dinosaur lacing cards too so that's another thing but I, they're like little I think the best way that I can do it is just to draw it <laughs> if they're like really Chrissy didn't know what those things were I know they are they're like little wooden shapes like this and so she had a free printable that showed you how to use and they're normally like blue green yellow parallelogram and all that stuff and so anyway um, she had a free printable that you could use those little pieces in your home to make the actual dinosaurs. So the printables that she had for free were the dinosaurs and you just use the little pieces that you had in your home to make the dinosaurs. So that's another hands-on um, activity that has to do with dinosaurs. I'm so glad that I talked about her and remember that because it reminded me that I wanted to make a cake for this. And you're like, a cake? Yes, a cake. So you take your cake. And you bake it <laughs> of course you're not gonna have a raw cake right so you're gonna take your cake and um once you're all done with your cake you're gonna kind of um just kind of take your hand and just <laughs> snatch some of it right like a dinosaur would just like <laughs> just take a big big gulp out of the out of the cake and then you just like stick the dinosaur like face down into the cake, <laughs> you know and it's like Oh my god, let's say you like say like it's snack time. Okay guys, who's ready for snack? And they're like, I'm ready for snack, mommy or Miss Christy, depending on if it's a daycare kid talking or your kid, because this video is applicable to daycare, mom, homeschool, whatever, taught school, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. Loving, learning kids, loving kids. And so anyway, guys, let's go have a snack. I have a special snack for you. Oh my goodness! Who ate my cake? Uh, Star J said uh, they're gonna like that. LOL. <laughs> Ooh, like, I've got a special snack for you guys. Or if you don't talk like me, all right, guys, who's hungry? Got a snack for you, whatever your voice is. You know, so I've got a snack for you. And then you turn around, oh, a dinosaur took my cake, and his face is in there, and he's eating the cake, <laughs> or had his like feet in there, smashing around. And, like, it'll actually take like this and put the, the cake in the ice and like walk it around the counter. And now we get our like microscope little, um, Guys, we have a detective. You know, even if before you bring the cake out, just hit the dinosaur's head. Sorry, dinosaur. <laughs> um, so we have, we take the, sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my gosh, call the doctor for the dinosaur. Um, so even if we did like, before we even bring the cake out, we say, guys, who made this mess? And then like have like little chocolate footprints all over your counter with the dinosaur's feet. 
guys, who made this mess? And there's like footprints all over and everybody's like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And you were like, I see footprints. And then you're like, all right, let's take our magnifying glasses and let's figure out who did it. And then that's when you, um, you know, bring out the cake and you're like, oh, the dinosaur did it. And then there, you know, that's the end. And so we're gonna do that on day four, on Friday. So we'll probably have the dinosaur cake. Um, and do like a little hunt, like a detective work to find out what happened to the dinosaur and all that. So anyway, guys, um, I don't know what the next unit is going to be. I will let you guys know. And um, maybe I'll try to come back and just chit chat with you guys and maybe come back like twice a month or um, weekly and just share what unit we're doing and then maybe whatever unit we're doing you can get inspiration so that you can then do it for your homeschool and hopefully while I was talking you were getting some ideas about your dinosaur unit or going and pulling out things or just getting um, other types of you know things that may work maybe you don't have exactly what I have but something similar and although this was a dinosaur themed unit I just want you to know that what you saw me do is applicable to anything so this was dinosaur but if it was um birds then everything that I did you do the exact same thing but just with things that are birds and bird like so instead of the d it will be letter b and instead of the dinosaurs it will be little birds so um hopefully that helps you um it's free. <laughs> you don't have to pay anything, but hopefully you get ideas and you're inspired. And then when you're at the Goodwill, when you're at the thrift store, when you're at Target dollar spots and things like that, you can think about like, okay, I saw Christy use that and she had those little pieces and it just get your brain and mind thinking. So anyway, guys, remember you can do a lot with a little. Um, I do appreciate you watching and coming and joining me. I love you. And